Hey guys, it's Gainy Girl. So, um, I'm doing a video today about things that I recommend, supplies and tools, um, for making model horse saddles and other small items for your model horses. This is mostly just for saddles, um, but all this stuff can be used in some other way to make some other pieces of tack. So, I recommend having them all on hand, even if you aren't necessarily making ta saddles in specific. So first of all, what you're going to want to start with every single time is a already made pattern. Um, so I make mine from regular paper because I change them so often. However, if you um, find one that you're finally happy with, um, you can cut it out in cardstock and you can put it on line and save it, um, save it as a file. And you can do a lot of different things with them. You can laminate them. Um, but that's always the first thing that you're going to need. You're also going to need some good quality leather. Um, so these are a few pieces I have already cut out um, for a saddle that I'm working on next. Um, and so this is from just regular tooling leather. I recently bought a couple of double shoulders um, from Tandy Leather. Um, as you can see, that little edge right there is all I've done so far. And I've done like three saddles, I think. And this entire thing is still left. Like, I haven't taken anything out of it, so it will last you a long time. They recently had a really big sale on leather, so I bought a couple. I bought two of these double um, shoulders, and it's pretty good. It's still kind of thick, and I mean, almost everything from Model Horse Tack is going to be thick. But, um, you just need to skive it down. So this area here in the back is where I have not skived, and this here is where I have taken a knife and literally shaved it down until it's thin enough for my liking. Um, so that's for the base of the leather, um, base of the saddle, uh, you know, just general pieces. Um, so I usually do this for the bottom flap, top flap, and the skirts. Um, for knee pads, panels, and the seat and piping, I usually use Skyver. And so Skyver is basically just some really, really thin um, lambskin leather. This stuff here is already totally dyed. Um, but I mean, at least, so I'm kind of weird when I do my stuff. When I dye leather, um, I usually dye a big chunk of Skyver and cut stuff out. But when I do stuff with um, the uh, tooling leather, I usually cut the pieces out and prep them and then I dye them. So I'm just weird like that. Everyone has their own preference. But this one has a couple of colors on here. This one has black and brown. Um, but this is key for anything that requires a lot of bending around shapes. So as you can see, um, piping requires a lot of bending because I fold it in half. Um, seats require a lot of bending to get it around the back, get it up in the front, and all this little nooks and cranny and bending it around the knee roll is especially hard, a lot harder than it looks. So that's what you're going to need that for. Um, so as far as adhesives I use, um, for leather in general, I use the Aline's Tacky Glue. Um, that's not the right bottle. I have like the extra durable fast dry, whatever it is. Oh, Turbo Tacky Glue, that's what it is. This is stuff that I use. That's an old bottle, I don't know why it's still here. Um, but it's, it sticks well, it holds well, it's very strong, um, and really it's just perfect for leather working. Um, I also use super glue for some metal things and other things that um, are more in terms of strength. Like, um, sometimes Actually, a lot of times when I'm gluing a piece of foam or leather to um, the metal seat tree that I make, I usually use super glue because it doesn't need to flex. So, because um, this is really flexible too, even when you glue it, and this is not, it cracks and stuff if you try to bend it. Um, so, I usually glue this to it because I want it to be super strong and I want it to stay. So, that's what I usually do. Um, so, that's all the adhesives I use. I don't really use a whole lot else when I do that. Um, Oh yeah, and for leather, I also have kangaroo lace. This is from a kangaroo. Um, this is like the best leather you can get from model horses. It skives really well. Um, and usually they're really small, tight grain, which is really nice. And they're also usually not too thick because if you get um, cowhide leather, it usually is a lot thicker. And deer leather is usually pretty soft, so a lot of people don't use that. But it all just depends on your preference in terms of that. Um, because, I mean, if you find a good roll of cowhide leather, there should be nothing stopping you from using it. Um, so, yeah, as far as metal stuff goes, um, I always have a little bit of wire 
This I use for making tongues for buckles, or you can make buckles from scratch using this. Um, you can also make uh, D-rings, that was the other big one. And then I also have little head pins, and these are little metal pins, and they have little circular stops on the ends. And this is what I use on the little skirts here to represent nail heads that they put in actual saddles. These ones here, I actually glued a little metal dome to the top just because mine are flat on top. This is what they look like normally. They're totally flat. But um, I bought some little metal dome thingies from the World of Model Horse Collecting. I think that's where it was from. And so I put them on top here. And I just like the look a little bit more. So these are a big must. I also put them in the saddle seat to support it. I put it at, um, I think I put two, one here and then one here. And that keeps the seat and everything all put together. You can see where the pins come out in the back. And I always cover it afterwards. Um, this needs to actually be covered a little bit more because they're still poking a little. Um, but it just holds everything together and it's a lot stronger than just glue because glue can always peel apart after it gets old, but pins will always stay unless you, of course, corrode it or something with acid, which is stupid. So don't pour acid on your saddles. <laughs> um, but um, I also buy cast um, pewter stirrups from Rio Rondo. Um, and so these are the cheapest ones you can really find. Um, World Mall Horse Collecting also sells stirrups. They're a little bit nicer but they're a lot more expensive, so I find this is just a little bit more worth it for me because, um, well, I usually do like quality. Um, I find that it's not that big of a difference that it's really worth it to me. So this usually works just fine for me. I also buy a lot of my photo etched buckles from them, but if you're doing stuff with tongue buckles, then I usually just make my own. So, um, yeah. As far as tools that I use, um, you're always going to need a good pair of scissors. My trusty pair are over there. Um, nice strong scissors because when you're cutting through leather, you really got to make sure that it's sharp because otherwise you're going to mess up your leather sheet and it's not going to go through and it's just going to be awful. So make sure you have a good one. Um, I also have an X-Acto blade. This is like the number one tool besides scissors for me. Um, it's, it cuts, it skives. This is what I do when I'm um, thinning the leather, I'll run the blade across the back grain side, um, or the flesh side, I'm sorry, don't go across the grain, go across the flesh, and that thins it out. Um, I also have a stitch marker, this is actually just a pounce wheel from Tandy, um, it's really nice, it makes the nice stitch marks that you'll see in saddles, it represents them at least, you can see them in here, they look like little stitches, but they're really just little dots, um, little dents almost in the saddle, and it works really well. I also always have backup blades because they dull relatively quickly, um, so just know your blades. I always get these like extra durable ones, and they actually are a lot better in my opinion. And then I also always have sharpies and pencils with me because I use these for tracing, um, tending to my patterns, and just fixing random stuff up in general, marking them, and showing whatever I need. Wire cutters are really important. These I use to trim wire and the head pins. And then a couple good pairs of pliers are also always a must. Um, I have round nose and, oh man, I can never remember these are. Lyman's pliers, I think they are. But yeah, I always have these two. And I also just have a regular pair of pliers, just the uh, needle nose, but I have no clue what they are. I think someone stole them. So I'll have to go get them back later. But, um, and then I also usually use a file. This isn't really a must, but, um, is usually good. Oh yeah, and I don't have it here. I don't know how to do that either. But I also have a pair of, man, I can't remember the name, but I use it for cutting through sheets of metal, but I'll get to that later. Um, so for other miscellaneous materials for the actual saddle itself, I always have foam. Um, this is just regular foam, craft foam. Uh, I usually use the stuff that has adhesive built in and you just take the back sticker off and then you can stick it on and you can cut it out to whatever shape because it comes in a sheet. But I mean, just regular comes normal and you know, you can use that too. Uh, I also always have elastic. Um, you don't need this and I mean, you honestly don't really need the foam either. Just notice that if you don't get foam, they're gonna, you're going to need to use a lot more tooling leather. So I'll get onto that in a little bit. But um, for elastic, you don't need to have this. This is 1 8 inch and same as the leather. 
but it makes girths so much easier to use. So this is a girth here that I already have made, and when you are able to stretch it out a little, it makes it so much easier to put on a model horse. Because if it's not, then you have to like get your fingers under there, and you gotta tighten it, and it's just way harder if it doesn't give a little bit of stretch. Um, so if you're ever gonna sell a customer's saddle, always put elastic on it because it's just it makes it so much easier. I made the mistake with my earlier saddles and not and every time I found it was just way harder. So always do that. Um, for the saddle trees, I use a sheet of duct metal. So this is it right here. I used to use like soda can uh, metal, but it just wasn't strong enough. It didn't hold its shape. This here holds its shape super well and it just works great in general. The only problem I have with it is that if you're going to drill holes in it for head pins, especially for supports in the saddle, you're going to need a drill press or some other kind of drill to get through it. And you might break a lot of drill bits, so just be careful with that. Um, and so you're going to need a way to cut through it. I use a pair of... Man, I can't remember the name of it. <laughs> I feel bad, I'm sorry. But get a pair of like metal clipper type thingies and make sure it works well for your saddle. Um, always practice a little bit cutting because even though it may seem easy, cutting through metal with a pair of metal scissor type things is actually a lot harder than it seems. Um, it just depends on the pair you get and all of that. That is what the file is used for. I use it if I didn't cut it out perfectly when I originally cut it. It always helps to have the file to file it down if you made a mistake. And I have a couple different ones. I also have one there and that one there has a bigger grain. So I can take more off. Well, that's a finer one. Um, sandpaper is always something that I have. It may seem odd to have sandpaper for leather, but it actually is really big for me. Um, so on knee pads, I make mine out of leather, but you can do foam too. I usually take the not so great leather and I make it from that just so it doesn't get wasted and it works really well. I also use a layer of leather to cover my seats just to give it a little bit more thickness and a little bit of squish, but not quite as much as foam. But that's just personal preference. But anyways, when I have my knee roll and my seat ready to go, before I cover them with Skyver, um, I will take the sandpaper and I'll sand the edges just to make them round. So you can see on my saddles, the edge is nice and round. It's not sharp cut like it would be if I just cut it out with scissors and left it. You can see this is pretty sharp. But, um... Yeah, so that's what I use that for, and that's always really important. Um, I use it on panels, too. Neither of these saddles have panels, um, but I usually do, and those with the new sanding as well. Um, so if you also, if you do happen to put tongue buckles on your saddle, you're going to need a mechanical pencil. Um, this is a drafting pencil. Uh, you can try to read that brand. I have no clue how to say it, but it is the .5 size, which my camera is not going to show, but that's what it is. And so basically this is just a mechanical pencil and when I want to put a hole in my leather, I'll put it over the leather and I will hit the top with the hammer. Um, I always use my rubber mat for the hole punch just because I want to absorb some of the shock. Um, as far as if I use this plastic one, then I'm really <laughs> scared that I'm going to smash my pencil. So just um, know your own strength. It's, you know, always start lighter and if you need to, you can hit it again. Um, but this is really great. Um, because just poking holes with awls really doesn't seem to get it. It do it just doesn't seem to cut it. Um, like it literally doesn't cut it, it just pierces a hole in it. Um, but if you use this and it actually takes out a circle of leather and it removes it totally so that it makes it a lot easier. I actually have a video on that, I believe, on tongue buckles and that such, so I recommend viewing that if you're interested in doing stuff with tongues and buckles and that stuff. <laughs> but um, also always have like a little pin or something to open it and clear it out. After a while, you'll have a bunch of leather clogged in the tip and then I will go in with this and just push it out. This is just a regular sewing pin that I took the tip off. So yeah, that works really well for me. I highly recommend doing that. Otherwise, it tends to not punch as well just because there's more crap jammed in there that you're going to have to push through when you punch through more leather. So just be careful with that. Um... But I think that's pretty much everything I use on my saddles. Um, oh, dye. That is other stuff that I wanted to get to. So for dye, I'm sorry, I almost forgot that. I use Fibings dye. Sorry, it's kind of gross and dark over here. 
So this is Five Wings Dye. I have three colors currently for regular colors. I have British, Tan, Chocolate, and Black. And so Five Wings is really the only leather brand that leather dye brand that I trust. Um, Eco Flow is another one that's really popular, but I've never really had a lot of luck with them. Um, a long time ago, I bought their Java Brown leather dye. And I was really mad because when I put it on my leather, it turned out green. So you really just need to know your own leathers um, and be careful with them, especially with unknown brands and even some of the well-known brands such as EcoFlow. So you just gotta be careful. Um, as far as finishes I use on them, I actually do use EcoFlow for that. Um, so anything not related to uh, color seems to be fine for them because I this is Satin Jean and it's a great protector. It really is just satin finish and it works really well um, against dye rubbing off. But I also use their gum tragacanth, however you pronounce this. And this is really great for just smoothing things out, especially after you've sanded your leather. It's great to um, go ahead and give it a little bit of a rub down. Um, and if you get fuzzy edges, like on these pieces here, I would later go over with the gum. But um, as far as fun colors, um, I always have a couple of them and I kick the trash can again. These I store under here. So I currently have Fibings um, Turquoise Leather Dye. It's more just a blue, but I love this. Fibings um, Acrylic Dye is amazing. I was totally impressed with it. So this is a two ounce bottle, but a little bit goes a long, long, long way. Way longer than their regular dyes. Um, so I wouldn't use this as regular dye though. It doesn't take quite the wear. The regular weather, weather dye, leather dye soaks all the way through it. Um, here's a piece I finished and it goes all the way through the leather if you um, put it on properly. And so that means that even if a little bit of your leather gets rubbed on something else, there's still going to be dye underneath that. Um, Whereas for this, even if you put finish over it, if it gets rubbed off, there's no dye underneath it. So you're going to take it all the way down to the leather. Um, so just be careful with that. Um, so this is really just like an acrylic paint that goes over your leather. Uh, I don't think I have any out currently. Um, I think I might have mentioned it in a previous video. But it just, it's perfect. I love this so much. Um, when it goes over the leather, it keeps the grain, and it doesn't have brush strokes, and it's just, like, satin, and it's, like, glossy smooth, and it's perfect. This stuff is amazing. Get it. Um, but when I was trying to be adventurous and go through some other stuff, I also picked up some of these um, Angelus dyes. I mean, these ones are cool, too. I like them. Um, they have really bright color, and I love that, um, but I mean the Fibings has nice color too, so you're not really missing out on anything if you don't get these. Um, however, unfortunately, this really is a lot more of just a regular acrylic paint. Um, when you put it on, as it dries, it seems to get almost kind of chalky, like if you were putting a lot of paint on a canvas. So I didn't care for that personally. Um... But just overall, it left a lot of brush strokes too, so you got to be really careful when you smooth it. And it also needed a lot of layers because it kept getting um, uneven coloring, whereas this just went on in like a couple smooth coats and it was just fine. So you really just got to be careful with these. Um, I think they were cheaper than Fibings, and they have a lot more color options, but um, I still consider them second to Fibings because they're just perfect with theirs. Um, so yeah, that's basically everything I use to make English saddles. Um, there may be a couple other occasional things that I'll use for specific orders, but I mean, otherwise, that's pretty much just it. So if you have any questions on where to get stuff um, or what else you could use, um, definitely post a comment in the comment section below. I will try to answer it. I don't get to every single one, but I will definitely try to. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. Comment, rate, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, um, I don't really know if I'm going to get back into a lot of videos like I used to, but if you have any smaller, you know, ideas, please go ahead and let me know. So, thanks so much for watching, guys. Bye!